Later on, we begin with our top story, seven days and counting, breaking news. Our debt continuing to skyrocket, still no deal from the Super Committee. Take a listen to what Super Committee Co-Chair Jeb Henserling told me last evening. We put $250 billion of what is known as static revenue on the table, but only if we can bring down rates. Any penny of increased uh, uh, static revenue is a step in the wrong direction. We can only balance that with pro-growth reforms, and frankly, the Democrats have never agreed to that. All right. All right. Here now are House members Brad Sherman, Democrat from California, and uh, Republican Budget Chairman Paul Ryan from Wisconsin. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. As we keep struggling on the Super Committee deliberations, Chairman Ryan, let me just go to you, okay? I'm a little cynical about this. I say that super tax hikes are coming out of this Super Committee, and it's going to really damage the economy. What's your take? No, I don't, we won't do that. I don't, we won't do super tax hikes out of this committee. Uh, if they're going to be tax policy, we're looking for tax reform. Lower rates, broader base, economic growth, the kind that you and I have been talking about for years. Um, but the key deal here is we've got to get some spending cuts. The deal is at least $1.2 trillion in spending cuts to prevent the sequester. That's the goal. We've got seven days to go. We're hopeful. I mean, we're, we're going to push this thing through to the last minute if we have to, to try and get something to get a real down payment on the deficit and the debt. It's important that we do this, and so we're, we're trying to get something done here. Well, okay, I get that, but Brad Sherman, welcome back. I want to say Democrats are talking six to $800 billion tax increase. That'll destroy the economy. And to echo Chairman Ryan, where are the spending cuts? Where are the entitlement cuts? I don't see it. Democrats have put forward significant entitlement cuts. We don't need to increase tax rates. We don't need to remove a single deduction. We just need to change the way we do accounting for multinational corporations. Right now, if a TV is designed in Japan, built in Taiwan, and sold at a big profit in California, uh, we're told that the profit was earned in the Cayman Islands. Instead, if we cut through that Gordian knot, and provide an apportionment formula for determining what portion of a multinational's uh, income is earned in the United States, that'll generate $1.2 trillion by itself. That's the direction we ought to be going. Paul Ryan, does that number make sense to you? No, it does. Are you talking about ending deferral? No, I'm talking about worldwide unitary apportionment. Uh, well, I don't think that's where we're going to go. Uh, no offense, Brad. But I didn't say <laughs> I, I did. I'm not even on the super so, committee. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not on it either, but I just I don't think that's something in the cards. Um, where we were getting some agreement with Democrats on lowering the corporate tax rate going to a territorial system, but that's probably going to be a lot to put into this package. But that's an area where there's some bipartisanship that we're hoping to get some fruit out of that later on. Uh, but look, Larry, we produced a budget that cut $6 trillion in spending over the same time period. So we can show people plenty of ways at arriving at a $1.2 trillion figure. And our negotiators have been offering Democrats various options on how to get $1.2 trillion in spending cuts, 1.5 to be specific. Um, that we think wouldn't offend Democrats. The problem we're having is the Democrats in the committee are still negotiating with themselves. They can't even get agreement, and so we're having a hard time negotiating with people who can't even get agreement among themselves, and that's that's a challenge we have right now. All right, well, Brad Sherman, your, your response to what Paul Ryan is saying, because, look, uh, apart from your, your corporate tax idea, we, we can do that another time. Mm -hmm. I don't see any Democratic spending cuts. I see on both parties a lot of fiddling with baselines, use of Iraq and Afghanistan funds that are going to run out anyway. And again, Brad, what I read in the papers is your party he wants uh, six to eight hundred billion dollars in taxes. So I got super tax hikes, no spending cuts. I don't know why this deal makes sense. Why not go to the sequester? Why not just run the budget trigger, take the one point two trillion sequester and be done with it? Well, Republicans negotiated for that trigger, but keep in mind, if you make a change in tax law, that'll probably last five or ten years until there's another revamp of the tax code. You make a change in entitlements, that tends to last for a generation or longer. The law that's going to have me retire at 67 rather than 65 is several decades old. But anything that, any law that deals with annual appropriations is revisited automatically when you do the next year's appropriations. I'm not sure that a mere statute that says don't appropriate more in 2013 uh, is going to do more than uh, create some press in 2013 when the Appropriations Committee and the Congress does what it wants. So this idea that the sequester is locked in, it's not constitutional, it's unlikely to survive. Well, you'll get, I mean, I, I think you make some good points, uh, but Paul Ryan, I mean, at least you'll get 2013 spending cuts. The out yeah. years doesn't mean anything to you or to me. We know how that game is played. But my other problem here is that regarding this tax reform you're talking about, 
about, which has not been decided on. It sounds to me like they're going to hand the rate structure over to the tax writing committees. Sometime next year we'll figure it out. But meanwhile, they're going to limit the deductions right now. And what's going to come out of this is a very substantial tax increase. No, we're not going to do that either. Look, I don't want to get into the, into the details of this, but... But you're not going to see some kind of a vague instruction like that that leaves that kind of a possibility open. It's either an agreement on a very clear structure or not, um, which is pro-growth. We're not talking about raising taxes here. We want to get the focus on spending cuts. We passed our budget by the deadline April 15th. The president has yet to submit a credible plan to deal with this deficit. He's been in office three years. It's been over 930 days since the Senate bothered trying to pass a budget. Today, the debt hit $15 trillion. So we are looking for any opportunity we can to get a down payment on this debt and deficit problem. And the problem is a spending problem, Larry. It's not a taxing problem. Right. And like you said, if you start whacking the economy with six, eight hundred billion dollars in tax increases, you'll just slow us down further. So we're not interested in going down that path. We're looking to have some partners on the other side of the aisle work with us to get a down payment on some spending cuts, which was just be a down payment, mind you, as a step in the right direction. All right. I'll leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Brad Sherman and Paul Ryan. We appreciate it. Good to be with you. All right, let's turn it over to the other side of Congress. Joining tonight, two distinguished senators. Michael Bennett is a Democrat from Colorado. Mike Crapo is Republican from Idaho. Senator Crapo, I begin with you. Pardon my cynicism. I don't see this exercise going anywhere.